All right, today I'm gonna to be doing something I've been looking forward to for a very long time. I'm going to be moving all this stuff into, wait for it, this case. This is the Leanne Lee 011 or 011 Air Mini in white. It's actually quite a bit heavier and bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay because it's big enough to fit a full-sized ATX power supply and motherboard, which is exactly what I wanted it for. What I am going to talk about is why I'm moving from this mini ITX case to a full-size case like this. Well, almost full-size case like this. Now, I originally bought this to be plugged into our TV in the living room so the whole family could play games and stuff on a larger screen. But that didn't last long, so I claimed it for use in my office as a gaming PC. And it didn't really make sense for us to keep it in such a small case in here, so we decided to move it into this larger one, which will give us room to expand and better airflow as well. Now, before I even think about touching any of this stuff, there's a few things I need to do with this first to get it ready. The back of this case has a fully modular design. So what we can do in order to lower the mini ITX motherboard and give us more room for the fans at the top is to take out every single one of these things now oh, it's easy maybe you have to leave those ones at the bottom i might take them out too and lower this there we go to the lower position there we go in order for us to install these fans we're going to need to remove the top panel and the glass side panel. All right, so these screws here should be just little, oh, they just come straight out, never mind. I don't know if they're meant to hang on or not. Yeah, there we go. Just slide straight off, nice and easy. This should just slide right off like that. Now, these Leanne Lee fans are still good, but I want to replace them purely because of the all-important RGB. In terms of fan speed and RPMs and everything, these are all pretty similar. The 120s do about 1500 RPM and the 140s do about 1200. I think the Leanne Lee fans let through a little bit more air, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice for the all-important RGB. So let's go ahead and give them a go. Okay, so I'm going to set this rear fan up as an exhaust. Now for those that don't know, the way these fans work is that they pull air through the open side without the grill. So we'll need to mount it with the grill facing outwards so it pulls any hot air out of the case. Now the two front 140mm fans may be a little bit harder to get to because they're in some sort of bracket, which we'll need to remove to be able to install the 140mm fans. Firstly, we'll need to remove the top grill and the front grill so we can get to the bracket and start removing the fans. Now with that out of the way, you'll see four little screws, two on each side of both fans, which you'll need to remove in order to take the bracket out. And out they come. Just gotta pull them up, take them out. Once you get the fans off, you'll see that each fan is also secured to the bracket by four more screws, which you'll need to undo in order to remove them. Ta-da! Now these front fans we're going to be installing as intakes, so make sure the open side of the fans are facing outwards while the grill side is towards the inside of the case, so you can pour some nice, cool, RGB infused air inside the case. Excellent. Once the new fans are screwed into the bracket, they should just slide back into the case like so. Perfect. Now this may seem obvious, but make sure you do the bottom one first as you won't be able to put it in if you do the top one first. Same deal with the top fans, I've got three 120mm fans that I'm going to install as exhaust, so I've got the grill facing upwards out of the case to expel all that hot air. Now, let's get this bad boy screwed in, shall we? For the bottom of the case, I've got two 140mm fans that are going to be used as intakes for the GPU. So the open side should be facing downwards to draw cool air in from the bottom of the case. Ooh, I forgot to mention, you'll need to remove the dust filter to access the fans. Luckily, it slides in and out of the bottom of the case fairly easily, so don't forget to put it back once the fans are installed. Okay, I think the next thing we're going to have to install is the power supply. And to do that, we're going to have to take the back plate off. All right, so I'm going to remove these little screws at the back here so I can slide the 
side off. The power supply sits nice and easy on the riders are here. Just make sure the fan faces outwards towards the grill on the back of the case so all the hot air from the power supply doesn't go inside the case. All right, so I've done everything that I'm gonna do on this case for now. Now it's time to go back to the old computer. So I've got to grab the screwdriver and take the couple of screws out that way. It's not many, but it's just a bit of a that I have to grab a tool and get it out. All right, that's some pretty good cable management. I'm gonna to have to ruin it all by taking everything out. I've forgotten how annoying it was to get everything out of here. Hopefully the new case will provide much needed room you'll notice that i oh, got <laughs> that was not screwed in very well that just came out straight away oh dear three there we go all right and once you take out the motherboard screws you realize you should have removed the graphics card shroud first before you can take the motherboard out damn it hey now she's moving. Excellent. And while I'm here, I'll remove the SATA and power cables for the hard drive, but I won't take it out just yet. I'll do that later once I remove the video card. All right, now it's time to install the new cooler. And I'm basically only gonna do what I did in my previous build video, except in reverse. And I actually had to look up that old video in order to remember <laughs> what to do. All right, so. Just going to fast forward a bit here while I unscrew the back plate. We don't need this one with the new all-in-one cooler because it uses the original mounting plates that came with the motherboard. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now would be a good time to show off how to actually clean these things. So what I'm gonna do is grab the old faithful 99.8% isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip or a cotton bud, as we call them over here in Australia, or cotton tips. We will spray it on the Q-tip. And we'll start wiping. And a presto, just like magic, it's nice and clean. Now let's hurry up and get the new all-in-one CPU cooler on. As I mentioned before, the new all-in-one uses the mount that came with the motherboard, so we're going to put that old backplate back on, then turn the motherboard around and install the old clamps. Sucks that I'm gonna to have to do all this again when I eventually get a new motherboard. Put the old cooler back on this one. Put this back in the other case. But that's for future Aaron to worry about. While I'm here, I figured I'd take the GPU off the old case's shroud and get that ready to install in the new case as well. Now this GPU will also be going back into the old case once I eventually upgrade the video card. Sometime next year, hopefully, assuming prices go down. <laughs> Remember how I said I was going to remove the hard drive later? Well, I figured I'd do that now. This is a five terabyte, 2.5 inch hard drive. It would be nice to get a new SSD, but those are still really expensive in their bigger capacities. So I'll wait till I upgrade the other components. Ta-da, there she goes. All right, now for the fun part, putting these components into the new case. First things first, time to install the motherboard's IO shield. Otherwise, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to install it after the motherboard's in place. Time to install the motherboard, and just as I suspected, the standoff screws are set up for an atx size motherboard, so I'll have to unscrew them all and put them in the right positions for an ITX motherboard. Luckily, this case comes with an adapter and plenty of well-marked mounting points in order to make it easy to move the standoff screws to the correct positions for ITX motherboards. Perfect. Once the motherboard's in position, time to screw it in place. The screws don't have to be in too tight in case you crack the board, just tight enough so they don't come loose and fall out like you saw happened in my old case. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now that the motherboard is in, is install the CPU cooler. Here we have the Corsair H100i Elite Capellix All-in-One Cooler in white. First thing we're gonna do since we're mounting this cooler on the side is remove the, ah, there we go, remove the side panels like so. Make sure you use the super long screws that come with the all-in-one cooler to secure the fans to the radiator for a super tight fit. Now, why they didn't make the screws the same color as the radiator, I have no idea. It's probably due to price, but it's still really annoying. Oh well. 
I'm going to be mounting these fans as intakes, but you can also do with them as exhausts. It doesn't really matter. The case manufacturer recommends installing them as exhausts. The cooler manufacturer recommends installing them as intakes. Try both and see which one gets you better temps. Just a quick note before I continue. You'll notice that I've had to remove the two front fans and the top fan in order to get this all-in-one cooler in. So you may be better off doing this when you first start the build. So I'll leave that up to you. All right, well, let's begin by removing the already installed Intel mount on the pump and replace it with the included AMD one. So the first thing to do is remove the plastic cover, being careful not to touch the thermal paste that's already applied to the cooler here. There we go. Pull that off there. Stuff and replace it with the included AMD mounts. And hopefully, I've put them on correctly. Take the included, what are these called? Eye screws, I guess. Insert them into the mounting holes on either side of the cooler. One in there. Screw the other half onto the eye screws, and these are gonna be what holds the all-in-one cooler onto the clamps we installed on the motherboard earlier. Before we install the all-in-one onto the CPU, let's install the GPU and see if the lines from the radiator can reach around it. For front and side mounted all-in-ones like this, Best practice is to have the lines facing downwards as this will keep any air that might creep into your radiator up the top and it will prevent it from getting into your pump, making it work harder and therefore not lasting as long. And that looks pretty perfect, so that's good. And I probably should have done this earlier, but now it's time to use the smaller screws that came with the all-in-one to install the radiator into the case. I'm leaving a bit of space above and below the radiator to run cables from the fans if I need to. Back to the motherboard. Hook the little eyelets. That's what they're called. We screwed in before over the mounts on the CPU and motherboard. Oh, gotcha. Now plug the pump into the all-in-one header on the motherboard and the two fans from the cooler into the CPU fan header and chassis fan header respectively. All right, now that the cooler is installed, it's time to plug everything in. Starting with the GPU, this one's not too power hungry, so it only needs one eight pin cable. Plug in the CPU power at the top of the motherboard here, the motherboard power on the side, and all your USB and front panel cables into their designated headers. I'll also plug in the hard drive SATA cable for when we hook that up. Run the power supply cables through to the back of the case if you haven't done it already, and plug them into the corresponding ports on the power supply. If you have a modular power supply like me, remember to only use the cables that came with the power supply, otherwise you may have issues with power draw or the connectors not fitting correctly. While I'm here, I'm going to install my 5TB 2.5 inch hard drive onto the back plate of the case. We'll start by installing the vibration dampeners into the slots here. Line up the hard drive underneath and start screwing it in with the tiny little screws that came with the case. It's going to be fun when I eventually unplug this to replace it with the SSD. With an SSD. Yeesh. There it is, all screwed in and ready to go. Now I'll just put that aside for later. Now in order to power this thing, I need three hubs. The one that came with the cooler, one of the RGB hubs that came with the fans, and the Corsair Commander Pro. Now why do I need so many, you ask? Well. The one that came with the cooler is the only one that has the power point for the actual cooler. And the Commander Pro is the only one that has the USB hubs to power these other two. Plus, with there only being about six ports on these and 11 fans in the case, you can do the math. So let's see how all these are going to fit in. Using the sticky tape that comes with each hub, I've stuck the Commander Pro and the included hub for the cooler to each other, and I'll do the same with one of the RGB hubs that comes with the fans as well. It's quite the uh, hub sandwich I've got here. Now let's get into plugging all these power and RGB cables in. Starting with the power for the all-in-one, I'm going to match up the gray square on the cable with the gray square on the port in the hub. If you can see that there, it's quite small. It only goes in one way though, so it should be fairly easy. I'm also going to plug in the two USB power cables from the all-in-one hub and the RGB hub into the USB ports on the Commander Pro. There's only one for each hub and they only go in one way, so it should be nice and simple. Cool. Now to decide which fans to plug into which ports on this hub sandwich I've got here. You can do it in any order you want, so I'm just going to start by randomly plugging in the power connectors from the front fans into two of the six fan ports on the Commander Pro. And I'll plug in the fan power connectors from the top, rear and bottom fans into the corresponding fan ports on the all-in-one hub. Now onto the RGB connectors. I'll plug the ones from the front and all-in-one fans into the separate RGB hub that came with the fans, because there aren't any RGB fan ports on the Commander Pro where I plugged their power into. Well, technically there is, but they're labelled more for RGB strips rather than fans. I don't think it'll make much of a difference, but I'll just keep it this way for consistency's sake. And because I want to, damn it, it's my computer, I'll do it the way I want. 
And now, finally, you should get where this is going by now. I'm plugging the RGB plugs from the top, bottom, and rear fans into the RGB ports on the all-in-one hub, the same hub that I plugged their power into. And now I'll stick this whole schmozzle I have here to the back of the case support using the tape that came with the hub. Yes, I know the cables are looking like a dog's breakfast right now, but we can fix that up later, don't worry. Before I forget, let's plug the all-important SATA power plugs from all three hubs into the SATA power cables from the power supply. They're the same type of connectors that also supply power to the hard drive, so I might as well plug that in at the same time. The last thing is to plug the SATA connector we plugged into the motherboard into the data port on the hard drive. The SATA data cable... SATA data. <laughs> the SATA data cable is slightly smaller than the SATA power cable, so it shouldn't be too confusing. Although depending on if it's a right angled cable or not, it might make it a bit difficult to plug in, as you can see here. Also, sorry about the terrible camera, but there was absolutely no slack left in the cables after plugging the fan hubs in, so this is as close as I could get it. And I couldn't be bothered moving the camera to get a better shot. Now I'll put the backplate back on. Is it even called the backplate? I don't know, that's what I'm calling it. Firstly, by inserting the bottom into the two slots on the bottom of the case, and screwing that annoying little screw that shouldn't need a screwdriver, but does because whoever designed this case loves to make people grab their tools. And then finger tighten the top screw, which is how the bottom screw should have been. Whoever designed this part of the case obviously likes using their fingers instead of their tool. Anyway, that's in there nice and tight and ain't going anywhere. Now check out that bulge. From all the cables being stuck back there, not whatever you were thinking. There really isn't a lot of room in there for cable management, even though I did end up stuffing some of the cables into the empty hard drive cage back there. I just hope the back panel can still fit with that sticking out like that. Moment of truth, and luckily it does, and you can't even tell there's a bulge back there. So there must be more clearance between the backplate and the side panel than I thought. Now that everything's plugged in, let's get the glass side and top grill back on. There we go, it's nice and solid. I don't want to take the plastic off yet. I don't know if it'll add to the heat or anything. Now I know they say you shouldn't close up your computer until you've tested everything and made sure it all works just in case you need to take it apart again, but I like to live dangerously. Plus, I'm lazy. Now that that's all done, let's take her over to the desk, plug her in, and see if she works. Now, would you look at that? All I've done is turned on the power supply, and this motherboard's already lit up like a Christmas tree. Didn't see that in the old case. I can also imagine this getting quite annoying if you've got this set up in a bedroom and are trying to sleep at night, but luckily this is in my office, so it won't cause an issue. Hey, at least the power button works, and it lights up as well, with a nice clicky noise. Work for me. Hey! She's alive. She's alive. And there we go. Ah, perfect. Alright, now that that build's all done, it's time to get into some gaming. I'm not going to do any temps or testing for this video. I might do another one for that. Or I might not. Depends how I feel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. You know how whenever you build something there's always screws left over? Well, I have no idea where these ones came from.